Blessed good evening, Gonzalez. My name is John Michael Mira from the Beautifully Broken Ministry alongside the Belmont Street Evangelization Initiative. So here we are here today to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. This initiative, we go around many different areas within the Belmont community, just spreading that word, that message of love and Jesus Christ. Before we had the topic of self-control, then we had the topic of love and sacrifice. And today we have the topic of a closer walk with Christ. And there's no greater time to embrace this topic as we go into this Lenten season, a closer walk with Christ. And as I reflect on, on this theme, a closer walk with Christ, I, I was taken back into the garden. I was taken back when God himself walked among Adam and Eve and he created each and every one of us to have relationship with him, to have a walk with him. But sometimes we feel as if God isn't there. Sometimes we feel as if we don't hear our prayers. Sometimes we feel as if the presence of God has left. But today I could tell you that the presence of God never leaves because he is always there. Sometimes it's our own waywardness that changes the course of the relationship. Sometimes it's the things that we do, the things that we say, and the actions that we portray. But today, as we go into this season, I invite you into a closer walk with Christ. And I would like to bring to the mic today the praise and worship team, Tracy and Julia. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to enter into praise and worship. If you are hearing the sound of our voice, you who are on this Gonzalez Hill, I ask you, come and join us down on the recreation ground as we give God the glory and the praise as we ask his precious blood to come into this space, to come and cover us, we plead the blood of Jesus. And you who hear us via the media, join us in our praise and worship. Hallelujah. There is power.
you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. We declare your Lordship in Gonzales, Lord God. We declare that you are Lord and Master and King of Gonzales. Lord, we claim you, Lord. Worthy is your name, Lord Jesus. Righteous is your name. Blessed be your name, Lord. And we just want to call on he who is the light of the world just to come in to this place. Because, because the light of the world shines down on us and has made his home in us, we walk in that light. Hallelujah. Amen. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses every sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses every sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the One more time. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Thank you, Tracy and Julia. We just have one announcement for the youths, the young adults. If you have any topic that you might be interested in hearing, any topic that you might want to get greater insight into, we ask that you just send a message, send a WhatsApp, or even call these numbers. 682-2940-2940. Or 475-7858. And now we bring to the mic a very wise individual. A very versed individual. The individual who founded this initiative. And as we go on the topic, a closer walk with God. I believe there is no greater person than to bring this word with his wisdom. So I just want to introduce my brother, as you all know, uh, Uncle, Uncle George, George Johnson. Testing. your spirit send your spirit send your spirit 
So good evening to Gonzalez. So we know that the topic that we're going to be discussing today is a closer walk with God. But <clears throat> one might ask the question, I have, lived, I have been living my life for all these years. You might be in your 50s, you might be in your 60s, and you know you were indifferent to God, and you probably were able to get by in one way or the other. But what does God offer that probably we have not looked into in depth that will compel me to want to have a closer walk with him? What does he offer? Well, I would start with this. If one is to follow a path of instructions and realize from those instructions that I will enjoy lasting peace and everlasting joy. Would that not be something that one would want to get more of? Peace is something that eludes us in this world. So if I can follow God's instruction and I will enjoy peace, and lasting joy, or what we call eternal joy, or some people would call it eternal life, that would be something that I would want to strive for. So you may be familiar with the saying that form is temporary and class is permanent. Joy can be compared with class. Our joy can only be lasting when we commit daily to embracing peace through an encounter with the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Note that there is no other way to achieve that eternal peace and its partner joy other than an ongoing encounter with the one Lord, Jesus Christ. What better can we expect from God other than if we can live our lives following certain instructions and every day we woke up with that peace of mind and that in inner joy that even in the midst of the challenges that we might face in this life that inner joy sustains us because it is god spirit dwelling in us so there's a song that i know that my colleagues will know this song you know the song that i've got my mind made up let us we sing one or two verses of it and i will just start it as i have it written I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin, I stay no longer with you because I have me. No Lord's way the rest of my life because I'm to go God's way the rest of my life. So we we want to say in order to get that peace and that lasting joy, we have to say goodbye to the pleasures of sin. And those pleasures of sin 
they sneak up on us so subtly, so sometimes unexpectedly, that we fall into the trap of sin and we wallow in self-pity, we wallow in being disgruntled, being unhappy, you know, lacking peace of mind, and we wonder why that is so. So let us examine what does God say about peace and eternal joy. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is taken from Romans chapter 5 verse 1. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And only through our Lord Jesus Christ can we obtain that lasting peace. So therefore, if it is we have been doing things in the past, oblivious of God's command in our lives, we are not really experiencing the peace that he has held out, that he has promised us as we started off by saying. But we are experiencing sometimes probably we are in a bit of infatuation, probably we are in a bit of delusion, probably we are in a bit of probably just pure pretense. But peace can only come through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's another one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So there's a connection between faith in Jesus Christ and eternal joy or eternal life. I'm using those two terms interchangeably and the peace that will flow therefrom. We cannot, we cannot enjoy peace on this earth unless we have forged an encounter or developed a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Another, fa um, par another phrase <coughs> from the Bible goes like this. This is from John 10.10. 10. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. We cannot enjoy that fullness of life that we speak about unless there's a connection with Jesus. Because by ourselves as created beings, we tend to fall short of the mark. We need the grace that comes from God in order to be able to enjoy that lasting peace. So then the question must be asked, what keeps us from participating in this life of peace and eternal joy, which one could call original blessing. I saw my brother John Michael spoke about the blessedness in the Garden of Eden. Yes, albeit for a short time, there was perfect blessings or what you would call original blessings in the Garden of Eden before man decided to disobey and there was a fall. So we have to ask ourselves what it is in man. Remember, we are created beings God is the only creator. Therefore, through our creation, God has given us something called free will. And that free will allows us to make choices. If those choices are not informed by faith or by trust or belief in God, sometimes, most of the times, those choices cause us to get into trouble. So let us just recall the, the, remember we said that how goodbye pleasures of sin, I stay no longer with you. Let's look at two examples. Marriages, for example. So you are having a difficulty in your marriage. Hello, what's new? Satan tempts us with the empty promise that the grass is greener on the other side and that you will be more happy there. Satan often lures us with the promise of things that are not his to give. There's no way under the sun. Nothing that Satan has to offer will bring us lasting peace or eternal joy. What Satan consistently delivers are chains that ties us up like the proverbial market crab, leading to possible depression and even spiritual death. You know, there's an old saying, what's sweet in goat mouth? Because sour in the bam bam. So yes, for a short time, that affair that you might have as a married person with somebody outside of the marriage, it might be sweet for a short time. But usually it ends up with a lot of pain, bad blood, acrimony, 
and sometimes even hatred. What about the village ram? The village ram who makes his children here, there, and everywhere. He's not tied to any one person, but he's planting his seed all about. Can that man experience peace and lasting joy? If you are fathering children or mothering children, let's, say, let's deal with the fathers because the fathers have a responsibility here in terms of fathering of their children. If you are fathering children and you're not taking care of them, how can you on earth expect to enjoy lasting peace and eternal joy? That is not possible. Because you'll be thinking of who might be looking after your children, even though, or sometimes you might not even care. But if you have brought children into the world, you have a responsibility to take care of those children. So those are two examples, what we will call one of the gateways that Satan comes in to take control of our lives, that gateway of pleasure, that temptation of pleasure. Because when Satan observes how you are, what are your weaknesses, he throws the temptation at you. And sometimes you might just say, it is just too sweet to refuse. But trust me, I have the experience. It is not going to serve you well. You will be more harassed. You will be more downtrodden. You will be more, all the negatives, miserable. Face the reality. Face what is before you. Come to learn to love everyone as God has loved you. And that includes the person who would have become your wife. And that includes it with the village ram. Settle down with one person. Don't have children, you know, fa fathering children all about them. I am also a catechist in the schools, and I could tell you from speaking with some of the children, the children in our schools today are extremely restless. And when you speak to them, you hear things coming about, my mother don't care about me. I don't know my father. You hear those constant themes. A child who is growing up in a home, like a fowl in the yard, with no father around, no mother around, how can you expect that child to enjoy peace in, in the child's mind? So when the child comes to school, the child is completely restless. I am telling you, and I know because I go to the schools every week, some schools are literally war zones. And the teachers, have, I have to take my hat off to a lot of the teachers in a lot of our schools. Something needs to be done in our school system or something needs to be done in terms of parenting, something needs to be done in terms of guiding parents so that they can do a better job with their children. It was only two weeks ago, if we want to look at, so we dealt with the pleasures of sin, but we could look at other types of examples that doesn't bring peace or lasting joy to the community, and therefore it takes us further away from God rather than coming closer to God. The St. Vincent Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, at an energy conference in Guyana two weeks ago, he used the platform to tell parents to discipline their children and that there can be no peace in the region for a child who is without discipline. Now, imagine a prime minister is making a statement like that at an energy conference. This was not a family life conference, but he felt it was important enough to say then. And it tells you the problem is not only here in Trinidad and Tobago. The problem is throughout the Caribbean. We are dropping the ball in terms of our families. The families are too dysfunctional, not united, broken up too much in order for us to enjoy any sort of lasting peace. Now, others might say, another way somebody might say that, how I am, well, if I win the lotto, I go to go. But that wouldn't bring you, that would only bring you peace for a very short time. But the lasting peace we are talking about is something that comes from within. It cannot come from without. Yet others might say that how oh, if I marry that man or that woman, the love of my life, I good. I don't want nothing else again. Well, marrying that man or that woman, there's something that needs to come there. Because that sacrament of marriage God is in the middle of it. 
And if you don't utilize the services that God is offering you to you freely by consulting and conversing with him, well, also to that marriage will not experience peace or lasting joy either. Not yet others might say that, oh, if I get this perfect job, that will bring me, but that would not bring you peace either. The peace we are talking about is nothing that is transactional. The peace that we are talking about is something internal. The peace comes from within and it flows out. The peace that you have inside of you comes out in how you deal with others. So it was a common thing for parents long ago to tell their children, if you don't listen, you will feel, and it is so. So at the very heart of why we fail to enjoy lasting peace, we as a community, me and you, all of us, is either ignorance of or disobedience to the will of God. Often our fallen nature seeks to deny our humanity and its limitations, and we wallow in the illusion that we can attain lasting peace and eternal joy without God. Brothers and sisters, as we would say in Trinidad and Tobago, that and a green donkey you will never see. So let us be honest with ourselves. In general, we are, not, we are an obstinate and hard-nosed kind of people. We believe that we are always right, and even if we are wrong, we choose on most occasions not to admit it or apologize for it. And in the midst of all that kankata, in case the young people might know bacchanal confusion, we wonder why we don't have peace of mind. So to begin to open the door to receive God's graces, the goodness that comes from God, we have to first admit that we are sinners who are in need of ongoing repentance or conversion. If we want to enjoy lasting peace and eternal joy, mentioned earlier, daily we must die to sin. And I must say, I could put in brackets, self, because we are all sinful creatures, and we must rise daily to new life with Christ. Rising to new life with Christ requires two action steps, namely justification and redemption. Justification suggests wholeheartedly placing our faith and trust in the person Jesus Christ, and by so doing become God's children. So when we have faith in Jesus, we become his children and we follow his lead. As a child follows her mother, we follow Christ when we become children of Christ. We might fall from time to time, but the church in its wisdom has provided us with the sacrament of reconciliation where we can give account for our wrongdoing. And it is humbling for us as individuals when we have done something wrong to have the opportunity to say that I am sorry, I have sinned in this way or in that way. But it helps us. So, in the, so to begin, yes. So if we want to enjoy lasting peace, rising to new life with Christ requires, as we said, justification and redemption. Redemption is the other one, which is demonstrating our faith in Jesus through the performance of good works towards others. So it's not only believing. So I could believe in Jesus Christ, but if I don't action my belief by doing something for God's people, helping my neighbor, being my brother's keeper, you know, um, we, could, we could get into the corporal works of mercy, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, and I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, and I was in prison, so forth and so forth. We know we have the seven corporal works of mercy. So action coupled with belief is what helps with our salvation. Not just believing, not just justifying, not just believing in Christ, but the action step of doing things for Christ is what helps us to become disciples destined for our heavenly home with God. So God created us in his image. He gave us a will and a, and a freedom of choice. And the freedom of choice, the power to make good choices, though depend on our connectivity or faith in God and belief in his son, Jesus Christ. Let me just read that again. God created us in his image. He gave us a will and the freedom of choice. The power to make good choices, though, depend on our connectivity 
or faith in God and belief in his son, Jesus Christ. When we choose to disobey him and go our way, we sin. It is that sin which isolates us from the love of God and denies us the benefit of his promise to man for lasting peace and eternal joy. So we see from the activities in the garden with participating in that forbidden tree, we can see that when we disobey God, because God told them that tree in the middle of the garden, leave it on the fear of death. But yet still, we have that way in us of disobedience. So listen what the Bible has to say about our weakness. And I think it was our brother John Michael mentioned it in the first. This is from Romans. And really I know of nothing good living in me, in my natural self, that is. For though the will to do what is good is in me, the power to do it is not. And that is so true. The power to do what is good comes from God, comes from our connection with God. So when we are disconnected from God, we, we, we lack the graces that are necessary to do what is good. As a matter of fact, we are, we are not cleared eyed enough to see. You see, sin causes us to become kind of dark eyed. We don't see clearly. We don't see what we're doing. We're not seeing how we're hurting others. We're not seeing the implications of our actions. But what we have to do is, you know, we have to constantly remember, do the will to do what is good is in me. We want to do what is good, but the power to do it isn't. We need to connect to Christ so that we can do what is good. So that the good things that I want to do, I never do. The evil thing which I do not want to do, that is what I do. But every time I do what I do not want to, then it is not myself acting, but the sin that lives in me. Now, this is Jesus Christ speaking through the Apostle Paul. There's a sin that lives in us, all of us, because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So acknowledging our sinfulness helps us to, first of all, come to that place of, okay, I need help. But if we don't acknowledge our sinfulness and we come to the source of grace, which is Jesus Christ, well, then we wallow in self-pity, we wallow in doubt, we wallow being miserable. You know, we just make a mess of our lives. And there's an opportunity for lasting peace and eternal joy waiting for us. He's patient and he's waiting. He just, you know, as he say, who could come and knock and that he will come and listen to them. So I find this rule for me where I want to do nothing but good. Evil is close at my side. So I find this rule that for me, where I want to do nothing but good, evil is close to my side. Brothers and sisters, let us get to understand that Romans chapter 7 verse 21. Evil is always close to our side because of that fall in the Garden of Eden. We will always choose, and I challenge anybody who might be listening, we will always choose to do what is wrong before we choose to do what is right, most of the times. Particularly if one of the, the access points for the evil one, like pleasure and, and possessions and pride and so forth, is at work in us. So, I see nothing. This is the last one from Romans chapter 7. But I see that acting on my body, there is a different law which battles against the law in my mind so that I am brought to be a prisoner of that law of sin which lives inside my body. So, so look at sin. Sin is, sin, is, um, sin, sin, is, sin is very, very near to us. It is constantly at our sides. And it's constantly in our bodies. The only bridge to connect sin or to, to reconcile sin with goodness is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there are some others I have come to call, not the upright, but sinners to repentance. 
So don't feel you have committed all manner of sin. Even the, the shooters, if they, they might have one or two living in this community, they might not, as the case may be, because they have them all over Trinidad. If you today put down your gun and say to God that I am sorry for what I have done, you can begin, and I am seeking your repentance, you can begin today to bring further peace to this community or even outside the community by your actions of giving up wrongdoing. So even though we might be sinners, don't feel that all is lost. As we spoke about the sacrament of reconciliation, it's always there to bring us back, to unite us back into the fold of the body of Christ. For all have sinned, we said that, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, chapter 23. So it shows that God understands our sinful nature. He understands that we will fall. But he has also provided us with a way back to him to be reconciled. And it is for us to take up the offer. And for the wages of sin, there's another one. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What can you ask for more than that? The wages of sin is death. Death to the soul. Sometimes it even leads to physical death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And we can say eternal joy as well. In Christ Jesus our Lord. So our choice to sin separates us from God. People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. Because you know, because we are kind of stiff-necked kind of people, we feel that we can always do things on our own. Brothers and sisters, you can't. You need God. And without God, you cannot do it. So let's listen to what scripture says about those people. I would say those people who are full of pride. Because pride is having an exaggerated importance or belief in oneself and one's ability. And that could also carry us, carry us to a place of hubris where we feel that we can do nothing wrong. Be almost like a little God. So we have to be very, very careful. Listen to what God says about people who are full of pride. There's a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. And listen to another one. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. You see, my brothers, God is the kind of person, God is the kind of person who is a, He's not a, he's, he's, he's a jealous God, but he's not a pushy God. He's not going to be coming on your coming you. He's there. You can come to him, but it is up to you. So let me wrap up quickly. What is the bridge? Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. When he did, he paid the penalty for our sin and bridged the gap between God and us. So, there is a bridge that helps us to be reconciled. And that bridge is Jesus. So, there are some scriptures from Isaiah. Yours, yet ours, were the sufferings that he was bearing. Ours, the sorrows that he was carrying. While he thought of him as someone being, while we thought of him as someone being punished and struck with affliction by God. A man so loved us that he decided to take all the humiliation, all the degrading treatment, died for us because he knew that by rising on that third day, he was also offering us an opportunity to rise with him. As we said earlier, every day, particularly during this Lent, we must be dying to sin but rising to Christ. There's another scripture that goes, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ. Again, that's 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. There's one God and one mediator. God has sent his son Jesus Christ into the world to redeem us. We have the rich knowledge of his existence. Let us tap into it and learn from him so that we can do what is in accordance with his will. And then the other one, he says that, oh, for Christ also suffered once for sin, 
the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. He was the one who bore our sins. He suffered for us. We have a responsibility if we want to build strong relationships and walk closer with God. We have to suffer in our relationships as well. It's not going to be all free sailing. And in the last verse before we come on to the, to the closing, then speaking to all, he said that oh, if anyone wants, to be, anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross every day and follow me. What is that saying to us? We are going to face crosses every day. Pick up your cross. Walk with dignity. Be obedient to Christ and follow him. So God has provided the only way back to him. You are invited to choose between lasting peace and eternal joy or death of your soul. How do we receive Christ? We must trust and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. All through our lives, we have heard phrases like, so help me God, tomorrow please God, in God we trust, in man we bust, local sayings. All these statements suggest a preeminence of God over, the, over man, the creator to the created, who reigns supreme in the hearts of, be, of believers. As mentioned before, if at the core of our being is a desire, a yearning for lasting peace and eternal joy, then we must, starting today, be on a quest or a mission to unveil or discover the pearls of wisdom only found through an encounter with Jesus Christ. That helps us as a family. It helps us as a community, the wider society, to work towards lasting peace and eternal joy. What a wonderful place it will be if Trinidad could enjoy more peace at this time. I understand that the, the murder rate is, I think, is at about 104. And we only roughly in two months. So you're looking at 50 per month. And if one is to extrapolate that, we, we go into the same 600 again. We can't go on like that. We are killing our young men. You know, how, how would our economy build if we are losing that amount of manpower? We can't replenish. We will suffer from diminishing growth because we just don't have the labor in the market when we kill out each other. We can't be just thinking of ourselves, you know. So, so as mentioned before, peace and lasting joy is only possible when we use our God-given gifts to work towards the common good and not the individual good. And the Bible says that there are many different gifts, but it is always the same spirit. There are many different ways of serving, but it is always the same Lord. There are many different forms of activity, but in everybody, it is the same God who is at work in all of them. Each and every one of us have been given the life, the breath from God to come into this world for a specific purpose. And when we kill people left, right, and center, what happens is that all we are losing our human capital and we are affecting our own development as a country. So, this may sound harsh, but it is true. If we are working for God, or for the good of the community, we are working for God. If we are working for the good of ourselves, we are working for Satan, the devil. And we know that he is the convener of all death, destruction, and all manner of mayhem, bacchanal and confusion. Today we are presented with two parts. Choose wisely. Enter by the narrow gate, since the road that leads to destruction is wide and spacious, and many take it. We know that. Many will take it. And yet, so to close, I'm getting the wind-up signal, so I will close quickly. So, so to summarize, how, here is how you can accept Christ into your life. Just to summarize all what he said, admit that you are a sinner. That's the start. Be willing to repent. Believe in Jesus Christ and be willing to repent. Be willing to say that I'm sorry. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. We are saved by faith. Faith in him. The same way how he rose, we can rise as well. And through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as Lord and Savior. So in closing, 
I would want to say this prayer, and we can, those of us who are in the audience, we can repeat this prayer as we say this closing prayer for the Gonzalez community. So we say together, Dear, Lord, dear God, Dear God, I know I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me Guide my life and help me to do your will. To do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. 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 Blessings in Jesus' name, man. My name is Joshua David. I'm 18 years of age. And I'm, I'm about to minister one of my songs that God has blessed me with to you. So the name of the song is Hold On. And just, just by the name, right? And just pull it, bro. And just by the name, you will say, what is Hold On? What is Hold On? Hold On could mean many things. Hold On could mean Hold On from depression, from killing yourself. Hold on from giving up. Hold on from giving up from God, from giving up on school. Right? So to kind of cut it short, hold on. All right. Oh, yeah. Na, 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 na. Journey like David and Moses and Joseph. Friends, you will drink with and smoke with and joke with and blow spliff. Who we'll make him out of plant or process? Yeah, I post me because God me roll with no dirt, it's not roll with no rosary. Then put on fix my ear like pants and jewelry and jersey. When well, make Tyler pick me up like snacking and grocery, but pick up Tyra, but it's and Sophie. So you have to tell you, hold on, hold on, hold on. When the time got rough, my head. Hold on, ja, hold on, hold on. Tell them if you watch this, if guys don't like this, like don't have them playing actor, actress. Everything I shut down when Jesus Christ walk and see it and plant them coming. Bible me drag with them talking too much. Get a Indian moon, I'll get a Chinese too young. No fits die too young, but Jesus soon come. Jesus is Lord, fully Jesus. Me tell them, hold on, hold on, hold on, ja, oh, 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 hold on. So me tell them, hold on, tell them, be hold on. Could it have full time and sing dog? Could a child or big man? Still a break, put and break on. Hot like stove, cold like a gland. Criminal, rise up, ingram. With scope and little pickets, boy in a distance. Could a tell like whisper up in a seat hands. Could a big and song like your name, King Kong. Yawa with Jesus. Ja, ja, yeah. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Na, 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 no. We are called upon Jesus Christ. There's no one and name. Become a wild love. Be wild love in a love in a vanilla. Because love sweet and trouble with vanilla. No trouble, the trouble, live the trouble, not trouble. Yeah, so me tell the youth them. But it's not full of that. But them still bar. Squeeze up the beret and our fine work. We feed them familiar. Yeah, for the Jesus. I want them to know. Me tell them, hold on, ja. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, man.
We thank you for Joshua Lord. We thank you for his ministry of music. Um, we thank you for letting him be present with us. We thank you for the word shared tonight by Uncle George to walk closely with God. And as we come to close off our time here at Gonzales, we just want to ask God to come down and be with you who are gathered here. We see you in your homes. We've seen you on the hillside looking down and paying attention. And we thank God for your life and your family's life. So, Father God, tonight we surrender this place to you. We surrender every family in this place in Gonzales to you, Lord God, in Belmont. We ask, O oh God, to come down and make your presence known to every household, to every mother and father and child. Oh God, just minister your power. Pour out your blood to wash them. Lord, protect them. Let them know that you are there with them. And Lord God, that they can come to you. All they need to say is, here I am, Lord. Use me. I need you to do what you want to do in my family, to make my family whole again. Lord, bless their finances. Bless their health. Bless them, Lord God, in their homes. They're going and they're coming, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this ministry in which we can come and bring your word in song, in prayer, in the breaking of the word. We ask you, hear and answer us for the sake of all those in this place of Gonzales. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Walk through these hills. Walk all around it. Walk within the homes and make your presence known. Blood of Jesus. Wash them and make them whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anything? Gonzalez, it was a pleasure to be here. And thank you for sharing this evening with each and every one of you. Just going back on the announcement, if you have any topics that you would like to hear, anything that you would like us to talk about, to touch on, feel free to message us on WhatsApp or give a call at 682-2940, or 475-7858. That's 475-7858. This here is an initiative done and produced by the churches within the community. And some of them that you can call for more information is the St. Francis RC Church at 624-7923. The Victory Christian Outreach Church, that's 223-7159 or 310-300-7. The St. Margaret's Anglican Church, 6241856. So as we leave you today, as we close today, I just want to say thanks again on behalf of the entire team for allowing us to be in your space. And you can meet us back here again on the 13th of March. That's the 13th of March, which is in about two weeks. So you can feel free to come back out, share time with us. And we thank you for sharing this time with you guys. Thank you. Got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, goodbye world, I'm staying along with you, goodbye pleasures. I'll stay along with you. I made up my mind to go 
Google's Bay the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go Google's Bay for the rest of my life. Born, born, born.